I heard on the news today that a famous person, a celebrity, died of colon cancer. I happened to be vegan. It popped into my head that I could do a quick Google search. I could find out how much better or how much worse are my chances of dying of colon cancer in my early 40s as the celebrity had died in his early 40s. And one website told me vegans have a 16% better chance of never getting colon cancer. Another website used a different scientific study um, that concerned vegetarians rather than vegans and came to the conclusion it was 22% better odds for, uh, for vegetarians. Dr. Greger, Dr. Michael Greger, the leader of nutritionfacts.org, with his budget of over $2 million dollars per annum has a website that opens with the bold declaration that 70% of cases of colon cancer are avertable. And then the very next sentence is an equally bold declaration that a vegan diet can help you avert, prevent, and even reverse colon cancer. No, no, it doesn't tell you, it doesn't tell you that your odds are 70% better. It doesn't tell you that. It doesn't even insinuate that. The 70% statistic, however, is the only statistic in, in the article. You never get the 16%, you never get the 22%, you never get any, any other number to help you calibrate your expectations for how great the health benefits of a vegan diet are supposed to be. No, no, no. 70%. <laughs> and then this vague but passionate assurance that this has some dramatic health benefit. The whole article is written in what we would call weasel words. That's a Wikipedia term or it's a term popularized by Wikipedia. It is written in a manner that is obfuscatory, misleading, and that uses science in such a dishonest way that it becomes pseudoscience. This was not my only experience with Dr. Michael Greger today. Today, I saw a video on his channel that assures you, <laughs> assures you that the cause of acne is dairy and meat in the American diet. Until recently, for example, only a weak association has been accepted for the role of milk and dairy products in acne formation. But there is now substantial evidence supporting the effects of milk and dairy products as enhancers of acne aggravation. More than 85% of teens in Western countries exhibit acne. This implies that the majority of our population is living with overactivated TOR signaling, a major disease-causing factor. So, Early dietary counseling of teenage acne patients is thus a great opportunity for dermatology, which will not only help to improve acne, but may reduce the long-term adverse effects of Western diet on more serious TOR-driven diseases. Whereas on the island of Okinawa, nobody has acne. <laughs> but it's considered a disease of Western civilization, meaning in some places, like Okinawa, it was rare or even non-existent. Constantly insisting that veganism is the solution to the problem of acne, as evidenced by the population of Okinawa, who are not vegan. No significant percentage of the people of Okinawa are vegan. Most of the vegan restaurants in Okinawa are for white Western tourists who are there to swim at the beach, or who work at the American Air Force Base, or whatever. The people of Okinawa are not vegan. There's already this bizarre form of lie and deception built into holding up Okinawa as an example or a paragon of the health benefits a vegan diet can bring into your life. People of Okinawa have acne. It is just absurd to pretend both halves of that equation are completely false. Like you want to argue, you want to insinuate vegan diet equals no acne. So you then say, people of Okinawa, eating the Okinawan diet, right? <laughs> no acne. It's all completely false. Go to Google Maps, and uh, you can just use Google Translate. Put in the Japanese term for dermatologist, or acne clinic in particular. You think nobody 
in Okinawa has acne. If you watch a video of people walking around downtown Okinawa, they look like normal people. They look like you and me. And you're also going to see McDonald's restaurant. You're going to see all kinds of modern unhealthy food. The Japanese diet and the food being sold on the street, visible from sidewalk level, it's not vegan and it's not healthy. The people of Okinawa are not paragons of good health. And even if they were, they're not vegan. This YouTube video insinuates and obfuscates and uses the most dishonest weasel words imaginable to try to lead the audience to the conclusion that if they have acne, it's because they're eating a non-vegan diet and that a vegan diet will cure acne, but it never says those words. It never says that veganism will cure acne. He shows a series of screenshots of scientific studies. He doesn't tell you how those scientific studies relate to the thesis he's presenting, right? This is like, again, it's the use of scientific facts to create a scientific fiction. It's the abuse of science as pseudoscience, right? He seems to know what he's talking about and he seems to just have this vague conviction that um, acne is linked to the diseases of the decadent West and these diseases of the decadent West are caused by a non-vegan diet and they're cured by a vegan diet. So you fill in the blanks and the people of Okinawa, they allegedly don't have acne, right? And, and, and they have, it's never, we're never, what is the diet in Okinawa? Do people in Okinawa eat fish? Do people in Okinawa eat at McDonald's? Do people in Okinawa have dermatology? If you go to Okinawa and just leaf through the newspaper, are you going to see ads for acne cream? Do you think in the pharmacies of Okinawa they're not selling? No, no? Oh yeah, right. Never mind. This is a hoax. This is a scam. And there were millions of dollars involved. There's also a long-term process whereby the vegan movement is discredited by the people who are making the most money out of propounding veganism. You know my steez, no intro, no outro, just real talk. A few people were mortified and scandalized that I, as a vegan, as an aspiring vegan activist, that I would criticize Dr. Michael Greger for the brutal financial reality that they are collecting $1.5 million per year in, in round numbers, about $1.5 million per year in donations in order to produce YouTube videos. Just look at the website. Just look at their YouTube channel. You cannot take a glance at what that foundation is doing and say that this justifies a budget of $1.5 million per annum. When you have a finite project, a finite budget you're raising money for, you know how much is enough. This is of profound ethical importance. Dr. Greger is asking for more donations right now. And nobody, nobody except me, has stood up and said, $2 million is enough. How will he know? How will he know when he has enough? If you keep giving him more money, he'll find ways to spend it. The fundraising page for Dr. Greger's charity that seems to behave like a business, from my perspective, nutrition facts, that are still constantly asking for donations. A couple of years ago, it was $1.5 million, then it was about $2 million. Now they're well over $2 million per annum. And they say, oh, behind the scenes, um, we have a dozen employees. Well, do, do you pay every single one of your dozen employees more than $150,000 a year? Really? Really? You have a dozen employees writing that article? Preparing that YouTube video, making these vague, dishonest claims for the vegan diet. Really? It takes a dozen? Really? This is an organization that as it pushed from $1.5 million to $2 million to above $2 million per annum in income. Um, you know, they never had they never had the shred of intellectual integrity you would need to say the honest truth about any of these things. And I've seen the damage done, all right? I have known people 
who were misled by promises that the vegan diet would cure their acne. And it doesn't. It doesn't work. What happens? What happens when you have a political movement that's based on false promises? What happens when the loudest and best funded voices in your movement earn their living through over-the-top exaggerated promises and hyperbole? There are a whole lot of people in the vegan movement telling you the reasonable truth about the diet, about the ethics, about the impact on the environment. They don't have $2 million a year to spend, right? And I feel that we, as a movement, we don't have $2 million to lose. I mean, really, people like to disrespect my crew, but the fact is that you know my name and I don't know you.